Hello and welcome back. Apologies for that. We had some slight technical difficulties <laughs> in that our chief game designer, Paul Coleman, had trampled all over the Elgato kit that we were using to broadcast. But it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> We fixed it. We're here. We're back. You can tell so, it's launch uh, day because yeah. we're having technical difficulties already. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's good thing. Nothing ever goes perfectly. We'd be a little freaked out if everything was perfect, right? This is true. Or delighted. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fine. So yeah, no, let's get into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the, the kind of the start of the career, um, and for that we've got a lovely driver, Mike. Now, Mike. He, uh, <laughs> he's had a beer, he's had a burger, so he's playing on a pad and he's playing on gamer mode because uh, he doesn't want to show himself up in front of a live audience um, after a drink. So let's, let, let's be quiet for a bit and get into the start of Dirt 4. Your car flows through the times. It's like music. You find the rhythm. Edge of control. The adrenaline forces in your veins, but the whole world melts away until it's just you. Car, the competition. Be fearless. Awesome. So as soon as you boot up Dirt 4, that is what you're confronted with, and it's a very nice aspirational, inspirational video to get you ready for starting your career campaign. So do you want to talk us through what happens when you dive into the game, Paul? Yeah, I mean, that's a bit of a way of setting the scene for us, just kind of trying to get you in the emotional state that you need to be in to, to play Dirt 4, but then you get into the business end of setting up your profile. Um, it's a really cool thing that we're now allowing you to choose your uh, what your character looks like, um, both male and female. Obviously, you can choose it to wear a crash helmet as well if you if you don't want to show your face off. Um, but yeah, again, this is all part and parcel of the stuff that we've done to try and improve the overall kind of feel of the game, to make it feel a lot more like it's your career that you're embarking on. Um, and I think it's it's a significant improvement. It's something that we used to do in our previous games, like have that bigger kind of narrative going through the game um, and it was an important step for us to take with this so um, this is just the beginning um, the other thing that's worth pointing out here is that this is where you make the choice as to whether you want to go multi-platform leaderboard or whether you want to just uh, compete against other people on your own platform I'd recommend most people go for multi-platform unless you've got very specific reasons for only wanting to compete with people on, on the same <laughs> platform as you because ultimately I think it's one of our our coolest new features that everybody plays against everybody else when it comes to async and uh, leaderboards. The only split happens between gamer and sim, um, but everybody is playing against everybody, which is awesome. So this is um, the first choice that we want the player to, to make. It's the choice between the gamer handling and the simulation handling. Uh, gamer is absolutely about um, allowing players who are new to Dirt or have perhaps played some of our um, previous games like Dirt 2 and Dirt 3, it's their stepping stone to get back into the experience and really enjoy uh, Dirt games um, in the way that they're used to. Um, I actually think that it feels better than any of those games uh, did, the, the way that the car handling guys have, have made that adjustment from the core simulation engine that we've got and layered in the, the kind of handling stuff um, that's to do with the controller and the weight shift and, and those elements really really play nicely for, for that style of player um, and then when it comes to the simulation uh, I've said it before I'll say it again there's been an, a whole heap of improvements that we've made to the simulation engine since Dirt Rally um, it is essentially based on that that same game engine but developed further uh, improvements to aerodynamics we've done stuff with the tyres and the surfaces as well especially in Rallycross but if if you're already used to the, the more simulation aspect of Dirt Rally, then simulation is definitely where you should start off. But for the purposes of today, Mike's going to go with Gamer um, because he's had uh, had a drink <laughs> uh, at lunch. So, um, 
Yeah. So this is our first uh, first stage. This is kind of like a. I guess it's not really a shakedown. It's also not really uh, a tutorial. It's like a sort of welcome event. It's really just setting the scene and kind of putting you in a position where you can try out the two handling models to your heart's content, and then make a choice. Um, so. It's a nice stage in Australia, it's certainly not one of our easiest stages, but it's also not one of our most challenging. It's really a, a place for you to familiarise yourself with the controls uh, and get used to the notion of what it is to go down a rally stage. Um, we've put this in, not for the simulation players, but for those players who are new to rallying, who haven't really experienced this kind of thing before, to really help them find their feet and get an understanding of what it is to just drive against the clock on a stage. Um, so I think it's a really nice way of doing it. Um, we have out of the box chosen some assists depending on whether you make the game or, or simulation choice. So for um, gamer players we'll put you in chase cam by default. Um, most of the assists will be turned on and it should be quite a stable and gentle driving experience for you. If you choose simulation we'll put you in the cockpit cam and we've turned most of the assists off but not all of them. Um, but if you guys out there want to play on a wheel um, you want to set all your kit up and make sure it's all working, all you have to do is fire up uh, the pause button and you can go into the options and you can change all of those settings on the fly. You don't have to wait till the end of this event before you can set stuff up. I've seen some guys talking about the fact that we prevented people from being able to do that. That's absolutely not the case. It's just that you have to pause the game and, and find those options in there. Um, but yeah, this is an introduction to to not just the controls that you have to use but also co-driver system. It's such an important aspect of rally driving. Um, so getting that explanation in nice and early was really important because the way we've set up our tutorials, which we'll go to next, um, are essentially done in a way where you can skip them if you want to because we know that players don't enjoy being forced to go through a bunch of tutorials, um, but it is still important to have that very initial learning experience. I think you, you see it in first person shooters where they'll get you walking through that first level where you have to understand what the duck button is to get underneath an obstacle otherwise you can't progress so that they can create a much more staged kind of introduction to the various controls by doing that. This is our answer to that. Um, it's not meant to be patronising, it's just meant to be a, a nice kind of introduction into the game for, for all players um, and hopefully once you've got through it you can then start to customise the experience even more um, based on your preferences. So as Mike's come to the end, um, he'll wind down to the finish line and uh, then you get presented with, essentially it's a, it's a what we believe your um, difficulty level should be based on your performance within, within the welcome event. So we're not, this isn't a decision that we're making for you, you can still customise all, all of the options, um, but ultimately you can see here Mike has been recommended the pro level despite the fact <coughs> that you've been playing the game for the last uh, 18 months <laughs> it's embarrassing Mike but um, <laughs> if he'd done really really badly he would have got the racer uh, difficulty preset suggested to him pro is middle of the road champion is um, what the best players will get offered fearless is actually locked until you've got through uh, a good chunk of the career um, but that's you know, our ultimate expression of difficulty with 100% bonus. Um, you can also go in and customise um, by pressing the square button on PS4, but, but whatever button's appropriate to your platform. And within there, if, Mike, if you could bring that up, um, you can see it's not only being able to adapt the AI difficulty, but how many resets you've got, uh, sorry, restarts you've got, whether auto repairs are turned on or off anti-lock brakes and all the usual assists are in there. We've also got some new assists like winding down to the to the finish line marshal. We can actually um, assist you so you don't have to worry about um, bringing the car to a controlled stop. So it's all there and it's all customizable for players to find their own find their own perfect setting. One thing that we've also done with this is to make sure um, that when you customize the experience it doesn't just suddenly lump you into the custom bracket um, we've wanted those to be much more kind of, um, I guess the presets still exist, but you can customise within a preset, and then once you've changed enough of the settings, it'll actually move you up or down a preset level. So um, again, it's this is all about letting players kind of find their happy place within the game experience, and um, broadening this to as many people as possible, because we want as many people to play this game and enjoy it. 
um, and that's exactly what we've set out to do. So now we've gone to the Dirt Academy, uh, which is at Dirt Fish Rally School in Washington State in the USA. Um, it's a real rally school. If you're out in America, I suggest you go there. It's one of the best rally schools in the world. Um, it's also where they filmed the original series of Twin Peaks. This is the sheriff's office on the left here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really cool location, really nice open um, play area for you to get to grips with your car. You can come back here at any point in your career and really um, kind of test cars. You can test your setups there, play around with setups live. You don't have to load in and out. Um, but yeah, this is just the first tutorial, which is literally drive around and find your feet in the car. So you can see um, Mike's just going to drive around a little bit, um, perhaps do some big skids around some of these areas. But you can also show off um, some of the buildings and, and the compound areas around. Um, and then after you've done this for about uh, a minute or so, Jen will start nagging you to, um, to do some tutorials, uh, at which point you can bring up the Dirt Academy Hub and that will, um, that will bring up the, the chapter, the lessons uh, chapter and, and show you all the different um, lessons that are available. Um, so yeah, within, um, within here there's also all of the options available. We're actually going to turn the speech down because uh, I believe it um, clashes with what we're saying on the stream. So apologies for that, but we'll do that now so that we can make sure that um, you guys can hear what we're saying, but you should still see the subtitles up at the bottom of the screen. Um, so within the lessons, you've got um, varying different types of lessons. So you've got practical lessons, which are the ones with the steering wheel icon. You've got uh, video lessons, which are similar to the ones that we had in Dirt Rally, um, which have the kind of film strip um, icon to them. And then there's written lessons, which are we're not asking you to do a written test or anything. This is just us. Um, Should have. Yeah, I know, right? Should have. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're literally just text. Um, but they make it easier for us to describe things like how the code articles work. Whereas a video on that, you probably wouldn't take it all in, and then you would actually have to start taking your own notes, which is um, not great. So each practical lesson uh, comes with a demonstration where. Um, an AI ghost drives the car around in the guise of a, an instructor. Uh, this is actually Mike driving these cars around um, and recording the run. Um, you can see the telemetry system in the middle of the screen showing how much throttle, brake and handbrake is being applied. You can also see where it's suggesting uh, to change up and down gears um, <coughs> and how much steering input's put in. Um, so hopefully this gives you an idea of how much input you should be using regardless of whether you're playing on a wheel or on a pad um, and then based off this guidance you then at the end of the lap get the opportunity to drive the lesson yourself so I think for the purposes of moving on uh, Mike can do the lap uh, after this demo and then rather than going through all the rest of the tutorials we'll, um, we'll crack on with the career itself um, but this is just a, a simple example of one of the tutorials there's there's a whole bunch of them and they, they range from stuff like using the brakes properly all the way through to, to Scandinavian flicks or pendulum turns depending on uh, how, you, how, you, um, how you call it. I don't know, I mean, how have you found this? Because for us, I, I guess we're quite experienced with making rally games, we kind of know the techniques, but um, from your perspective, Christina, not like new to the Dirt franchise, has it been useful? Yeah, I find it really useful. So it's just, obviously when you pick up, when I picked up the pad on Dirt Rally and had a, had a go, you sort of, to an extent, I do drive, I do have a driving le license, so I know what I'm doing, but it's the technique that really it helps you refine and actually kind of the weight transfer kind of discussions and knowing when to brake or how to brake or how to use the brake, etc. It's actually really helpful for someone who's not as familiar with the sport as or the kind of simulation as uh, some others might be. So yeah, I think it's really great. And actually, this is a wonderful play area just in general. The, the school itself is, fantastic but what you can do in free play and what you can do with kind of the smash attack um, and kind of things around that like the time attack you can do with the obstacles it's a really really nice place to be in the game and it's something that is really reminiscent for me of Battersea in Dirt 3 yeah. which is you know super popular in Dirt 3 and it's really great that we've brought it back for four and it does it, like I say have the practical use of teaching you how to drive too so that's always handy. The other cool thing is that while you're installing on Xbox or PlayStation, you can play all of this while the game installs. So you get the chunk up to about 20%. Mm -hmm. You can start all this stuff. And that's not just the Academy, that's also all of the um, tutorials as well. Yeah. So that's why I've done them about seven times in the last two weeks. 
Yep. All right, so let's just take a question. It's from a guy called Nick. Uh, will there be a patch to have Paul Coleman back as my co-driver? I think people are missing you, Paul. <laughs> we sell you as DLC. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> won't be the first time we've been sold uh, <laughs> before. We don't know yet, um, is the honest answer to that. Um, you know, uh, initially when we were prototyping Dirt 4, we were using calls that, that I did, but they weren't recorded particularly well. They were just there to make sure that the system was working. And uh, the busier we got and the, the, the further we got down the line, the more sense it made to bring back Nicky Grist, obviously Colin McRae's co-driver and mm -hmm. somebody who worked with us a lot on the early Colin McRae games, and Jen Horsey, who uh, worked with us on Dirt 3, both professional co-drivers, both brilliant at what they do. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got a new system in place for our co-drivers, so now you can go in, once you've started a team, you can go in and hire a co-driver and those co-drivers actually all speak different languages, so if you're playing the game in French, you can still have an English co-driver, if you're playing, playing the game in um, you know, Spanish, you can, you can have an Italian co-driver if that suits you. Um, and I think that opens up the door to us being able to do co-driver voices that aren't necessarily supported by an entire game language pack. Um, which is a really exciting thing for me and, and yes, that does also mean that we could maybe get Brian Blessed to do co-driver calls or me to do co-driver calls again um, but at the same time you know, it's an opportunity for languages that wouldn't normally get support from um, a game to, to have co-driver voices in there as well so yeah, we're just kind of this is the foundation for the future and, and this is one of the areas that I think is, is something you know, really positive that we can build on Awesome. So you just saw Mike go into the mailbox there in the in the top right hand corner. You've got your level, uh, the amount of credits you've got in the bank, and then also your mailbox. So you've got access to any messages that might be sent your way. You get a nice introductory message uh, when you fire up the game, and then throughout the course of your career, you will get like messages from staff, sponsors, etc. So we've kind of got that interactive element that comes into the game too. So should we dive into career and do your first race, Mike? Are you uh, you ready for it? Not ready for it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Excellent. <laughs> So each of our disciplines comes with an introductory video uh, just to set the scene of what, what um, each discipline is. Um, you may have spotted it actually on the, on the tiles for each discipline. There's a bunch of like smaller icons at the bottom. They're actually the licenses that you unlock by progressing through that career. And so you can see how many licenses you've got and how far you are progressing through that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that after this video. Great, so we've also got a question from Horace about what's with the female American co-driver. So, Horace, you've actually, as Paul has alluded to, uh, with the English language, you've got the option of choosing Nikki Griss. So, Jen is your your kind of driving instructor when you start the game, and then you have the option to hire Nikki Griss. So, if you don't want to listen to Jen the whole way through, um, and you want to listen to Nikki, you have the option to do that. And if you wanted to listen to someone who spoke a different language to you, then you're also able to do that too. And I believe, Paul, you've managed to sneak yourself into the game as a co-driver. So yeah, this is the, one of the joys of uh, reusing assets. Because um, my face was scanned for Dirt Rally and we needed a, uh, another co-driver model because the decision to make the Polish language a part of uh, Dirt came quite late on. <laughs> um, they needed a co-driver model uh, to go with that, so I am now um, a fully-fledged Pole, uh, which is good. Um, so hi to all my fellow countrymen out there. <laughs> um, Hopefully you'll have me after Brexit, so <laughs> all cool. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, team offers screen here. You can see that Mike's relationship with TAC Motorsport is uh, not great at the moment, it's okay. It could get worse if he drives really badly, but it's more likely to get better, assuming he performs relatively well. Um, so this is where you start off as a, as a driver in your career essentially taking offers from teams to go and drive for them. That means that they will take a substantial cut of the winnings, but it also means you don't have to worry about hiring staff and a lot of the baggage that comes with that. Um, it's a really good way to start and find your feet. You don't, you don't have to worry about the kind of um, repair of the car in terms of cost. You do still have to make the decisions over what you're repairing, if you choose to. Um, but Mike is now heading out to the Dirt Club and Cup, which is a single stage rally event, so this is pretty light. It's, it's literally just get through your first event, through the single stage, and then um, we will carry on from here. Um, so this is Michigan, uh, really nice autumnal forest, um, fast flowing roads. Um, they, they actually offer uh, a good 
opportunity for people to find their feet because the edges of the track aren't too severe uh, so you can run a bit wide but then the further you go through the game and the more challenging the AI get um, the faster you find that you'll have to push it in these stages and then it becomes a case of how fast you dare go um, so you know Michigan is a nice starting area but it actually unfolds into a much tougher challenge later on when you're in some of the some of the group B cars and stuff like that Cool. So, got another question in from Ben. So it's quite early to start asking about uh, DLC, Ben, but we'll answer it anyway. Um, so, we'll be seeing any DLC. I think that's really something we have to play by ear at the minute. Um, as a lot of people have asked about VR, that's something we are going to look at once we finish policy polishing the base game um, as a consideration, because uh, we know that quite a lot of people have asked for it. But we also have to sort of monitor the success of you know Dirt Rally and the VR offering that we had there. Um, in terms of DLC, it's a question we can't really answer yet. No, it's it's all um, going to be based on decisions that are kind of out of our hands. Like we've got ideas of what we would do, and I'm sure you guys have as well. Um, and people who speak to me directly on Twitter have have given me plenty of suggestions and a lot to go away and think about. Um, but the plan is to keep supporting the game. Um, we've still got some some tweaks and adjustments that we want to make, and we've still got some additions that we want to add um, that are more about. Um, ways to play than necessarily adding extra content in from a traditional point of view so yeah I think um, you know there's there's work to be done across the board um, but the first thing we need to do is kind of take stock of all the feedback because we know that the, the feedback that's coming in is um, good in many areas but there's also people that aren't entirely happy with, with um, how the game's playing so we need to take stock of all of that and it's um, something that we'll be doing over the next few weeks. Great, so just going to let Mike bomb through this, but while Mike's doing that, we actually have a, a live and exclusive unboxing. Um, you may have seen on our Facebook page that we have advertised the Dirt Loot Box, um, which is have, has been lovingly and informally referenced to as a dirt box here in the office. Uh, I am going to hand over this lovely box to Darren and Paul to open and like I say this is for sale on Codemaster's own digital store so if I ha pass that over to you and uh, would you like to okay, so I'm gonna pop step trunk. inside the uh... I made a hundred of these yesterday so I'm quite familiar <laughs> with the dirt box <laughs> right here's your first item ooh, ooh. dirt 4 lanyard very nice. Are you going to model all this for us now? Could you wear so it all? You can dress me. In it. Okay, cool. <laughs> so what I especially like about these lanyards is the the very strong orange on the inside. Um, very different to anything we've done before that I think have been a little bit flimsier. So yeah. it's got yeah. a good feel to it. And actually, uh, the slightly gunmetal effect on the clip at the end. Um, just little nice touches like that. That you've got to hand it to to Andy Gray, our uh, our product <laughs> manager. <laughs> For really putting that extra thought in, going the extra mile. This is I haven't opened one of these before. So this okay. is, all, this is all new to me. Yeah. Uh, we also got a key ring. Yep. It's a, a rather nice rubberized key ring. Uh, Who doesn't love a bit of rubber? Doesn't perish. So. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't perish. So I just hooked that on there so that you can continue to see it. Um, do you think you can work out a way to fit a mug onto your new neck wear? I'm not going to hang a mug from my neck. Um, however, this is the Dirt 4 mug with the Be, Be Fearless um, slogan on there as well. Uh, it is not orange on the inside. We've got um, a complete gloss black finish to it, but it is, uh, it's a nice bit of kit. I think you will get a standard cup of tea kind of yeah. in there. Um, anyone who wants a proper bucket sized one might need to get two. I'm more of a double mug man myself. A double mug, <laughs> wow. Uh, next up, you could put your mug in this bag. So yeah, this is uh, this was one of my favourite bits when I did the, uh, the failed unboxing uh, that we did at Lidden, uh, which fell foul of uh, <laughs> the microphone uh, not really working very well. But it, it is a great bag, it's the sort of thing you put your sweaty box shorts in after you've been to the gym, or perhaps your, your wet swim trunks after you've been down to the That's beach. That's what I'll be using it for. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's that sort of perfect material for just about keeping moisture either in yep. or out depending White on which way you want to look at it. So <laughs> that is the uh, dirt full bag. You mentioned the gym. This will also come in handy I imagine. Ooh. Very, very nice. So this is, uh, do these come in different colours? Yeah, so there's orange and black and we have it, it's basically a lucky dip as to which one you get. So this is a dirt full water bottle. 
Yeah. Let's have a look inside. Here we Did go. You the water what should be inside? Out of the uh, <laughs> bottle pool. So, yeah, I mean, as with all uh, new uh, items that you might use for keeping food or uh, drink products in, it's just good practice to you know rinse them out, and and I would recommend you do that with this because the uh, there's a bit of a spit of scent to it, but uh, <laughs> it is a very nice piece of kit, uh, and certainly something you should be taking to the gym with you in your bag. So that fits very nicely in there. Wow, that's nicely done. So these come as a two. Okay. So we have a rather tasty uh, Dirt Four. You can see the slightly embossed logo uh, at the bottom. Dirt Four notepad. Are these moleskin? Or moleskin effect? Yes. Castelli, they are. made in Italy. Made in Italy, no um, expense bad. They've actually got this really nice orange uh, edging to them, which sets them off really nicely. They are lined, so if you uh, are uh, a blank notebook kind of person, you might be a little bit disappointed there, but um, I like to write between the lines. So I'm going really, against it. Really? Free form. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a lines person, so this suits me well. Um, it also has a nice. Uh, bit of elastic so that you can hold some extra bits and pieces uh, intact or just keep the uh, cover shut. A um, little bit nice. more in there? Yep, cool. two more things. I'll put this in the bag as well. So this is a Dirtful window sticker, so it's, uh, we haven't got any lights behind us have we, but no. um, so that is the way that you would kind of stick it on the back of the window and then it would uh, show through that way, but yeah, it does say Dirt 4 on it. And um, last, but by no means least, the uh, much sought after Dirt 4 air freshener. Were you involved in the choice of scents? I was, so the Dirt 4 air freshener was actually my idea. I'm going to take full credit for this one. Hi, <laughs> Nate's Christina here in Wick. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's actually Pine Fresh, which is obviously reminiscent of some of our stages. So it's a, it's a lovely a, touch. A lovely bit of realism yeah. to when you're on the uh, M40 sat in traffic. You feel like you're in Wales, which I think is a, a lovely thing. Yeah. yeah. So I've recently go. put one in my car, um, which up until this point had new car smell, and it's been superseded by Pine Fresh, so I'm very happy. Brilliant. Can you cool. get an air freshener that's got new car smell? I think you can, yeah. We'll get that one next. It never, never really smells like a new car, though. It's always a bit of a jet. Cool. There you go. How can people get their hands on these? People can get their hands on those by going to the Codemasters store, which is store.codemasters.com, um, and then also we've got loot box editions, so if you haven't bought the game yet, then you can buy a version with them, all the lovely goodies you've seen and if you've already got the game you can pick up that box separately with all the good stuff in it anyway. So we're going to go back to Mike and we're going to see where he is at this stage in the career. Is he just running through the next... So I think he's moved to the part? next career event but he's uh, he's taken up an opportunity with LNX um, to drive their Opal Adam. Um, so this is the second R2 car and um, speaking to a few people around the studio um, the general impression is that the Adam is a little bit more exciting to drive. I think it's, a lot of that comes from its engine note, because the Fiesta almost sounds like it's a great sound, but it's a very different sound because it's got the three-cylinder turbo in it. It almost sounds a bit flat, where the Adam has a bit more of a, of a roar to it. So um, it's also a little bit more exciting to drive. There's something in the setup that makes it feel a little bit looser. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great little car. Um, we actually had uh, Chris Ingram playing our game. Uh, he's one of the UK's uh, young, younger rally prospects. He's currently competing in a Opal Adam R2. He's very complimentary about the game, so uh, thanks to him for that. And uh, it was great to see him playing. So um, hopefully we'll see some more rally drivers playing in the near future. Yeah, and I think as we've just gone down that little bit of road, we've gone past a broken down competitor on the side. So that's a nice new touch that we've not previously seen um, in Dirt Rally. I'm correct, that's, an, that's, that's right, something yeah. new to Dirt 4? Yeah, so we, do, we did do them every now and then in Dirt 3, but you were racing with other competitors with like a five second interval, and so if one of those competitors went off, then they would obviously either be at the side of the road and struggling to get back on, or would fully retire. Um, with this, this is more about um, giving you something to think about as you go down the stage. Quite often, if you're further back in the running order, they will be one of your opponents, and it, and when you see it, you will know that you are going to get ahead in the in the running order. Um, but if you're leading your class and you're in an event that has multiple classes in it, which is most of our events in the career, then actually a lot of the time you'll see a retired opponent, but they'll be from a different class. So you might see a Group B car parked up at the side of the road while you're driving the stage and you're marked to escort. 
Um, oh dear, Mike. Okay. That's so, you know what? Second's fine. Yeah. No, second's fine. I mean, fine. some say it's, it's the not. first loser, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but to be honest, I prefer silver to gold. Sometimes I find gold a little bit tacky, so. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. fine. Everyone loves a bit of silver. It's all good. <laughs> so um, we've got a question that's coming from Simon here. He says, Love the game, but the handling physics don't quite seem right. Maybe because I'm comparing it to Dirt Rally. I, I'm not sure. So can we kind of talk a little bit about what we've changed from Rally and what people are experiencing? Yeah, so the, I, th- I guess the first fundamental thing is to say that we haven't thrown anything away from Dirt Rally, but we've built on what we had. And um, the stuff that we built on was mainly the aerodynamics, but also we improved the way that the chassis geometry was modelled. Um, but when you make fundamental changes like that within, within the engine, that requires adjustments to be made across the board so it's not like you just copy and paste the cars that you had and they'll run just fine um, now what that has meant is that the way that um, the surfaces and the tyres interact with one another has also fundamentally changed and um, we obviously got Petter Solberg and his son Oliver in and they were able to spend a lot of time playing the rally cross. and I think we got very very good feedback from them and, and got pretty close to what what um, the rallycross drivers wanted as a group for their cars to feel like and so we're really really positive and confident that rallycross is exactly where it needs to be for rally we didn't have as much time with Chris Meek and we only really got to focus in on the modern cars um, because they're the cars that he has the most experienced driving and I think from a modern rally car perspective the cars do drive really nicely and they're in a really good place but some of our historics are perhaps um, not to the liking of some of our fans who enjoyed them in Dirt Rally. Now a lot of that has come from the fact that in Dirt Rally the simulation was more primitive and therefore the way that the car moved around was looser and less predictable and a lot of that unpredictability came from the way that the system wasn't really simulating things properly. By now simulating stuff properly we've found that the cars are more consistent and probably have I guess what people are perceiving to be grip, it's not actually grip, but they're feeling like it has um, more that stability that's kind of holding it to the road and not letting it break traction as freely as it did in rally. Um, and as a result, we do need to sit down and we do need to look at ways that we can improve that. How those improvements get brought into the game, or if they get brought into the game, we don't know at this stage because it's such a fundamental thing to the entire experience and it really is like a big thing to be switching up and I think we had on Rally we had that really positive aspect of having um, of having uh, a, an early access process where we were able to make those adjustments but it wasn't it wasn't easy and actually I would argue that we rushed the version 2 handling in Dirt Rally and ended up with something that felt better in some areas but not necessarily in others so we need to make sure that if we do any changes they need to be done properly but the key thing is they need to be validated by drivers who have experience of driving these cars and ultimately we need to find a driver or a number of drivers who have the real world experience and we need to get their time to sit down and dial this in because it's not just something that we can we can change based on many many opinions that are coming through this needs to be done as you would engineer a test session with a car and it's going to be a long process um, but you know we are listening to people's feedback we're certainly not ignoring it and I don't want people to feel like we've done this and we're just going to hide and run away from it this is not what we're about we're about listening to our fans and, and trying to deliver what, what they want us to do but the way that Dirt 4 has been released as a big upfront product rather than having a big beta lead into it means that the way that things are going to change is going to be slightly different to how they were before um, but yeah we are listening do talk to us um, but please try and keep your constructive as uh, uh, your feedback as constructive as possible because um, just saying it's arcade and awful is not true uh, we know it's not true because we're the ones that wrote the code and if we set it out to be arcade there wouldn't be a cho- choice at the start of the game it would just say you're playing Dirt 4 and this is an arcade game we've given a choice of gamer and sim why would we do that if simulation wasn't simulation uh, it, it would just be crazy so um, you know, you have to trust us that we will be listening. Um, but you know, 
keep that feedback constructive, please. Again, as much detail as you can as well. Mm -hmm. If you say yeah. that something's got too much of what car are you talking about, what surface are you driving yeah. on, if you can give us a video, that would be great. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and and even go as far as telling us what you've tried in the setup, because a lot of our cars have been set up to be as neutral as possible, um, to make them uh, safe to drive out of the box and consistent to drive out of the box. And a lot of the time, consistency comes in the form of understeer and things that make the car easier to drive by their very nature. Um, but there are plenty of tuning options available in the game that allow you to go off and, and dial in you know, much more aggressive and nimble setups there. So if you, if you are able to get the cars feeling great, tell us how you've done that. Um, that's not to say do our job for us, but you know, we're interested to know which cars are feasible to do that with and which cars actually you like despite all of the feet uh, despite all of the setting changes that you make you still can't get it doing what you want it to do so yeah cool so um we've got a question that's coming from mark pierce is there dynamic weather during a stage I think that's quite a good question so well yeah is the answer <laughs> um there'll be there'll mm. definitely be some conditions that sneak up you more than other mm -hmm. others i've had I've played stages where I've been quite familiar with it and I've gotten halfway down the stage and then just a massive patch of fogs comes out of nowhere and sneaks up on me. So, yeah, you'll see the weather changing dynamically to drive the stages, definitely. To, just to add to that, it's not like we've got, we're not modelling weather systems here, but we wanted more variety within our stages. It wasn't just a case of at the start of the stage the rain is this much and at the end of the stage it will be exactly the same. It kind of ebbs and flows. Um, we've actually modelled a few weather charts for how rain can sweep in and, and blow away. Um, and yeah, the same, same as Darren said with the fog, you can be racing an overcast race and then that will turn into thick fog as you go into the forest. And they're just moments like that that you, know, you experience when you're out on a rally stage um, that I don't think anyone's really done justice to in, in the gaming world. So these are the areas that we've tried to enhance um, over Dirt Rally and I hope that um, players can see those improvements making a real difference to the way that they're they're driving through the game. It's worth saying as well that permeates the entire game. You won't mm -hmm. just see that in career, but you'll see the varying weather in PvP and in community challenges mm -hmm. and you know every aspect of the game. You'll see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the system in. that's one of the things I actually love about the game. So obviously you've got your stage, which is phenomenal in term in terms of the amount of stages you can create and the kind of differences you can get. You can have a, like a short, fast kind of less complex stage you can have an incredibly long stage with undulating twists and turns and be in there for you know 13 15 kilometers but layer on top of that the fact that halfway through it could start raining or you could start it at night and it's horrible weather or it's blazing yep. sunshine at the middle of the day it completely changes the dynamic mm -hmm. of the stage and that kind of extra layer of variety is kind of something you take for granted when you see oh it's got this amount of locations the variety in those locations is you know through the roof mm -hmm. um, in terms of what you can actually race and the conditions in which you race in. So as you touched on community challenges, it feels like a good place to talk about where we're going next with Dirt 4. So have we got anything good going on this weekend, Darren? Should yep. probably ask that? Yeah, funnily enough, I got in very early this morning to set it up myself. Uh, we, for everybody that pre-ordered the game and that owns the pre-order card, the Planned R5, there is an amazing four-stage rally in Spain. Um, super sunny conditions, really nice rally. Um, it's running from, it's live right now, and it's running until 11 a.m. on Monday. So you can play that all weekend. You'll only get one attempt, as with all of the other community challenges. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice rally to get you started in your career. Yeah, no, I have uh, had a bash. And I say <laughs> had a bash, I mean literally had a bash. <laughs> so uh, you won't see me anywhere near the top of the leaderboards <laughs> for that particular event, but it is a, it's absolutely phenomenal fun. Cool. And um, also, when you enter the event, um, if you've got this kind of the day one edition, you'll also get a special livery for mm -hmm. participation. So that's worth that's right. mentioning as well. So there is a, an additional incentive to get stuck in there. And of course, the usual dailies and weeklies, monthlies will be returning. So um, we'll wrap up now because it's getting towards the latter part of the afternoon and we've got plenty to be getting on with with it being launch day. But um, I'll hand over you guys, to you guys because you guys have made the game and I'm sure you want to say thank you to kind of everyone who's been with us since January when we announced. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's one of the best things about working on a dirt game is the community. Like all the people that talk to us on Twitter and on the forums, they're really supportive, but then they also give us really useful constructive feedback. So if there's something that isn't quite right, we know exactly what we need to do to fix it. So 
it's yeah, it's a really cool franchise to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a game that didn't just start with the development of Dirt Four. This has been um, something that we've been working on well since the Colin McRae games, and this is just the latest iteration of that. And um, hopefully, if um, if the response to this game is as positive as we hope it is, you know, we'll be continuing to make great games like this um, for years to come. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who stuck with us through all of that time, and uh, thank you to anyone who's trying out Dirt 4 for the first time, because, you know, ultimately uh, we want as many people to enjoy uh, Rally and Rallycross and, and Land Rush, the sports that we love, um, as much as we do, and um, so that's what this is all about, it's, um, it's opening up the experience to everybody. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's nice. So we've got a Macduff salutes you, so that's nice. I don't know who Macduff is, yeah. but that's very that's very nice. And then big thanks to the team. Have a beer on me. I'm sure that we'll be doing that. We've already had we'll one. Have at least one, I think. Paul's got one on the go, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but same goes for me, really. It's been an absolute joy being part of this community and seeing you guys get excited for the game and finally get a hands on this week. And uh, if you're firing it up for the first time today or tomorrow or or just just have, um, we hope you love it and we hope you love playing it as much as we've enjoyed making it. Um, on feedback, uh, as Paul's mentioned, any constructive feedback, please just send it through the usual social media channels. We are always listening and your feedback is really important to us. Uh, and we'll see you on the leaderboards in future. So thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.